Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible study. We are still going through the scroll of Romans. We had a brief interlude with my conversation with Father Mark Bulos, founder of the Ephesus School Network, and in an homage to the flagship program, The Bible as Literature, you probably have noticed, and I will continue to when I think it is necessary, not do the full chapter, but do a few verses so that we can take longer to chew on our spiritual food, which is the spiritual sword, which is the word of God that grants life to all speakers and hearers. And of course, as a double-edged sword cuts both of them. So today we're going through the scroll of Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 13. As always, you can subscribe, share, and support. Subscribe wherever you are hearing my voice. Share the very words of God you hear recited and read aloud, as well as a link to wherever you found this with your favorite friends, strangers, and most importantly, those who you conceive of and perceive of as your enemies. You can support by going to patreon.com slash aksum. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash a-k-s-u-m. I've also started to sell some literature on art and science, A-R-T-A-N-D, science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, dot gumroad dot com, G-U-M-R-O-A-D dot com. Without further ado, let's get to verses 1 to 5 of Romans 9. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises who are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God blessed forever amen Paul note this says that he's telling the truth and he does so with a simple yes a simple affirmation or description he does not swear he does not take any oaths it, this is one of the basic teachings of the sermon on the mount but it seems that even a lot of orthodox christians don't take this seriously in the ethiopian culture it's even entered into some of our liturgical rubrics and some of the common sayings to ask someone whether or not they're serious you ask them to swear to die if they are not telling the truth mut that's horrendous and mut is actually one of the common semitic words so it's a good word for you to know if you're interested in semitic studies the Hebrew language and Aramaic language are languages of scripture. They're both Semitic. And if you happen to be Ethiopian or Eritrean, Amharic, Tigrinya, and Ge'ez are Semitic languages as well that we've had scriptures translated to and liturgical rubrics written in. I even had to confront my beloved local blessed bishop about our baptismal rubric, especially I wasn't going to do it for other people's ceremonies but for the ceremony of my own holy matrimony i had to say hey we shouldn't be doing any oaths and one of the many examples besides the sermon on the mount is right here in romans so we see that the pauline epistle and the gospel according to matthew are united in not using swearing or oaths but in telling the truth in a plain spoken manner that everyone could understand from the littlest to the most learned. We see him very passionately here discussing with rhetoric his people, the Israelites, and I say his people according to the flesh. 
according to biological descent and cultural for that matter because he grew up an israelite or a jew and the israelites have been freely given by god practically everything here they have adoption glory covenants the law or the teaching the service of god promises or covenants the fathers they even have christ himself biologically speaking or the messiah the anointed one born from amongst their kinsmen and paul would give away his very own life not just his life but his eternal life for their sake he would be anathema or accursed to christ were they all to accept him and trust him why because he wants them to realize even though they've been given all of these gifts they are still just a random sample amongst the larger population of humankind of which god the god of adam god the god of the jews and the gentiles god the god of the quick or the living and the dead is the god of everything is the god of a totality is the god not of one tiny city on earth and of not of a walled city at that by he made walls made by human hands at that but he is the god of a heavenly city that encompasses all of the cosmos all of the heavens and the earth space time anything that we've discovered and things we haven't discovered so this universal god to whom goes the glory and to whom is blessed forever and you see the amen the aramaic there thrown in which is truly or given uncertainty i place my trust in this or most assuredly this god is worthy of being recognized as the god over all peoples and so he wishes dearly that his own people would recognize that and share what they have been freely given with everyone else that they encounter and we in our contexts should do likewise whatever you are given whatever tradition you are given within christendom try to take advantage of it learn it and share the good of it with all because we should all be examining everything and grasping on to the good remember god is the god of all verses 6 to 13 not as though the word of god hath taken none effect for they are not all israel which are of israel neither because they are the seed of abraham are they all children but in isaac shall thy seed be called that is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of god but the children of the promise are counted for the seed for this is the word of promise at this time will i come and sarah shall have a son and not only this but when rebecca also had conceived by one even by our father isaac for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of god according to election might stand not of works but of him that calleth it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger as it is written jacob have i loved but esau have i hated this passage here from verses 6 to 13 invites us to hear read aloud genesis 18 verses 10 and 14 genesis 21 verse 12 genesis 25 verse 23 and indeed malachi chapter 1 verses 2 and 3. so basically go read the law or the teaching and the prophets go read the scroll of the 12 and go read the pentateuch or the first five books and you'll get the greater context but in short it teaches that ancestry 
or being of the flesh together or biology alone cannot be the basis of which you live your life because that will be empty. Instead, you need a spiritual basis or a basis in words and not just any words, but words that come from a senior to a junior, words that are an unbreakable promise, a covenant. And so this is a dig against Sarah, whose will is not going to be done in trying to have Abraham have his seed continue through Hagar. And it is a dig against Abraham who listened to her as Adam listened to Eve, who listened to the serpent. And so Abraham's will is also not going to be done. But when we say thy will be done in the Lord's prayer, it's so that the Lord or so that God's will will be done and his will alone. We are descendants of Isaac or we are children of Isaac. We are heirs of Isaac. The laugh when we like the child of promise that he is or the child of the covenant that he is or the child of the word of God that he is not the child of Sarah and Abraham but the child of the word, of the promise, of the covenant of God, when we, like his birth, place our trust in the living God, in the author of life, who can make a barren womb give life. When we do that, when we place our trust in him, then we too are children of Isaac. We too are heirs of Isaac. Glory be and blessings be to the God of Isaac.